Hey guys, Thunderstud here, and boy oh boy what a crazy deck I have for you. I did not think we would get new Monarch support, and I didn't think we'd get an Arc V character who has Monarch support. It's absolutely crazy. It's not the greatest Monarch support in, a, in the world. His level up rewards are stuff we already have in the game, and we already have a lot of copies of him. He gave us a skill. It's not the greatest skill, but I'm just blown away we have a Monarch skill, guys. It's crazy. It can be used once per duel if you control a monster that was tribute summoned. Change one spell or trap card to a different card. A spell card goes to Frost Blast. A trap card goes to Awakening. Two very strong Monarch cards. Not the greatest skill. Still very cool that we have a Monarch skill, so I definitely had to dive in. We got a brand new Monarch from the selection box. It's Ryza. If this card is tribute summon, target one card on the field, put it to the top of the deck. It's like a red dragon ninja from ninjas. And if you remember ninjas, red dragon ninja had really good ways to really just put your opponent to sleep and finish the duel, returning the right cards to the top of the deck. So it's pretty devastating effect. Very excited to use this new monster. We're still using two Chaos who banishes. Obviously two Ryza, two Mobius, and we have two Zaborgs. We also have another two copy of a level six. He's not quite a Monarch, but he might as well be. Little different stat line at 2300, 1600. But when he's normal summoned as a level six or even special summon, you can target one monster on the field and banish it. So it's like a second part of Chaos, but he doesn't have that second effect to do five damage if you do it to a dark monster. So. What new stuff are we using? Or let me go over the rest of the old stuff. So we're still using Underworld Squire. He gives you an extra normal summon and you can add one monster with 800 attack, 1000 defense from your graveyard to your hand. Very cool, you, or you get a special summon I guess, right? Yeah, special summon. And then we have Soul Exchange. Usually Soul Exchange is a dangerous card because it can brick you once you've already got going. But I feel this skill is perfect. If you already have a tributed monster out, you usually don't need soul exchange. So you can use Neo Silvio and turn it into a Frost Blast. And then of course, like I said, you already have that tributed monster. So you're able to use your Frost Blast immediately. Very good use of the skill. So that's all just basic Monarch stuff. But how are we possibly using all this? It's with a great combination of Pendulum monsters, guys. So we obviously have our Aether. He's kind of like a boss monster, but he's also a four pendulum we can use when things are really sticky. But the pendulum we really want to use is Gongato. So strong, guys. He He's like one instance of Kiteroid per turn from your pendulum zone. He's also a level two scale. Very important and very low. Why is that very important? It lets us recycle our Archfiend Eccentric. She's so great. Level three, great effects. Pendulum, she'll destroy a spell. Monster, she'll destroy, tribute herself, destroy a monster. And guess what? The kicker of this card, the beauty of this card, it's stat line. It's 800, 1000. That means if it's in your graveyard, Squire can banish himself and add, or sorry, special summon your eccentric right back to the field. Crazy amounts of synergy with all this. She's a level seven scale. So with any of the two or four, you're gonna be able to special summon your sixes and really just get a lethal amount of damage out there really, really fast. On top of that, you could even use your two and your four together without the seven, and then you can keep recycling eccentrics from the top of your extra deck and just use them as tribute fodder for all your monarchs. Love the synergy in this deck. I don't think it's consistent enough to break the meta, obviously. I don't think it's consistent enough even really be a good rogue but once you get in your loops once you get some solid hands it's such a fun and cool way to play monarchs so i'm really excited about it hope you guys enjoy uh, i i was a little lazy and didn't do any extra deck you can do an extra deck obviously you can make level sixes or level threes it could work out just fine i don't think there's really any restriction to not have an extra deck so really should just have an extra deck but uh here we don't doesn't really matter you still have a million plays just with the normal deck but make an extra deck put level six xc's level six is a great pool put some level threes 
take off from there. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy and thanks for watching. All right, here we are facing a Jaden Yuki. We're going second. He's using 21 cards over there. We have a pretty good hand. Tons of Pendle monsters. Virtually everyone we have, and then our Zaborg. Now we have a Mobius. We're going to use our Eccentric. Destroy a back row as a head judging, so pretty good. Now we can use our Aether and our Gato. So what we usually use as two of our lower end can work together to summon our Eccentric. So now she can be used as recyclable, recyclable tribute fodder over and over and over for our monsters. So we use Mobius. So destroy that back row, use the shrink, which means we uh, go down to 1200. Now he's going to set a back row once again. We get another Mobius. We get to Pendulum Summon our Eccentric once again. This is the idea. You get you keep cycling your Eccentric out after using one of our great effects to destroy a back row or destroy a monster. Now she's endless tribute fodder for all these Mobius. He's gonna fiendish chain that Mobius. But he's still gonna be brought within 400 life points. So he's getting there. Top decks and scoops. We still had eccentrics and normal summons. Great, great stuff, guys. Alright, here's an Ashizu. We're going second. We got an eccentric. We got two eccentrics. We got Soul Exchange and a Squire. So no boss monsters. We're facing Dark Lords. Why? On Earth. I'm still facing Dark Lords, but he looks like he's some sort of counter fairy at the same time. Searching all sorts of spell cards. He's got a Valhalla. He's got a Sanctuary of the Sky. Sets and sets. There's a Nukabak. He knows a Superbia. We top deck a Mobius. So we're going to use our Eccentric first. We're going to destroy his field spell. Now he probably can't use his, uh, Negation. Then we bring out our Squire. That's going to be Mobius. Mobius is going to pop that last back row. It was, in fact, Divine Punishment. So he couldn't negate anything we were doing further. Swing over the Ukabak. Ukabak. He's going up to 3300 thanks to Fairy Smile, but has to pass his turn. We get another Squire. But we're just going to swing with him. Going to bring him within 100 life points of lethal. Very, very, very close. And that does make it difficult for Dark Lords because they need that 1,000 life to constantly recycle. And he does have it at 1,100. Starts with this Valhalla we knew he had. He goes with the Nastin he just top deck. Nastin's able to search Banishment. He goes with Dark Contact. Now he's doing the Dark Lord Contact. Brings out Superbia. Superbia's gonna bring out Ukabok. Ukabok's gonna mill Big Shell. Now he normal summons Desire, but he's just gonna swing. He's going for pure swings. Doesn't use Desire's effect or anything like that. We top deck our boy Gato. We top deck Eccentric. That's going to be a summon of Eccentric. We're gonna use her skill, destroy Desire. Bluff Soul Exchange. This is how we survive. We like understand how you survive. Bluff Soul Exchange, that's how you survive. He even takes the bluff. Not realizing our Gato is going to protect us from one swing per turn. So he didn't even have lethal from just that one swing. And he still made that defense position move just because of a bluff. Now we bring out Eccentric. Destroy Superbia again. He's left with one monster. And Gato has one monster handled. No problem. Gato's great for being such a tiny, tiny scale, guys. Now we're going to try to use a Soul Exchange. He's got Divine Punishment and Sky Sanctuary though, that's why we start with the Soul Exchange. He's gonna negate it. Now, we can do our normal stuff. We can Pendulum Summon our Eccentric like we have been. That's going to be... Chaos, he only has 100 life points. All his monsters are dark. That's what Chaos does. He hits you for 500 if he banishes a dark. Ending him for lethal with effect damage. Great, great stuff, guys. Alright, here we are facing a My Valentine on a win streak. We're going second. She's on a three win streak. I think it's Trimids though, if I recall correctly. I think she's trying to scare you like she's Harpy. But I'm pretty certain it's Trimids. So we have a pretty good hand. We have a four and seven scale. We have a Mobius, a Chaos, and a 
Aether. We're gonna use our Squire. This way we get the Chaos Banish. We're gonna banish his monster. It is in fact the Trimon monster as a master. Now we can Pendulum Summon our Mobius. We don't get his Field Spell's Destruction, but we do have a lethal amount of damage. I never thought I'd be special summoning Monarch monsters like this. Absolutely crazy stuff, guys. Alright, here we are facing a Zane Truestell. We'll go first. He is Cyber Dragon. But we have plenty of Eccentrics and Gatos to take them, so we're gonna just play our Gato. It's a little dangerous. We could enable some Cosmic Cyclones. But, I feel the give and take is more as he's an instance of no direct attack damage. Now look at this, we have a three eccentrics in our hand. We're gonna use all three of them. So Cosmic Cyclone 1. Should've hit the Gato. We're gonna use the second. He's gonna hit it with the Overflow. He's gonna hit the eccentric again. Boy, just hit the Gato, cause here's the third eccentric. That means we're ready, guys. We're gonna be able to summon the eccentric from the graveyard. And the Zaborg, when you special summon Zaborg, you don't have to do use his effect to uh, destroy a monster. When you normal summon him, his effect is not optional. So you have to destroy a monster if you're the only monster on the field, you're destroying yourself. There, it was a special summon, we didn't have to destroy a monster. And we had lethal after his Cosmic Cyclone. Very crippling, very cool stuff. So uh, I love Monarchs, I've always loved Monarchs. I didn't think they would be super viable with Pendulums. But I found a great way to play with Pendulums. I'm super into it. I'm probably going to run it more. Take it a little more serious with an extra deck. Because really this is an unfettered way to the 6 XZs pool. You can use 3 XZs once you get your eccentric loop going. Other than that, it's just trying to survive. I don't know if Gato is enough. Maybe something better than Soul Exchange that could help us survive. Even Econs could work out pretty well. Still turn them into Frost Blast if we need it. I'll try to figure it out, because Soul Exchange is good and all, but, uh... Or maybe we do have to do Soul Exchange. I don't know. We're gonna test it more. There will be more Monarchs in the future, maybe with Life Duels. We'll have to see. So thanks for watching, guys.